What's going on everybody? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Maker Mods. I'm Ben the Enthusiast, and today we're going to be taking a look at Cherry MX Blacks. Now I teased these in the last video that I did, the uh, unboxing, but today I wanted to take a deeper look at what the difference is between these MX Hyperglide Blacks and Vint or Vintage Blacks. According to Desthority, the Cherry MX Black is a medium stiff, linear, non-clicky mechanical keyboard switch in the Cherry MX family. It can be called the grandfather, if not the godfather, of the modern day mechanical keyboard switch. That's because it was the first one to ever be made. According to Cherry's own blog, the Mechanical X Point, or MX, black switch was first made in 1983. It was used in POS terminals, and that's why it has an actuation force rating of approximately 60 centinewtons, which is medium heavy to heavy, and it can be fatiguing if you type on it for an extended period of time. Over the years, there have been several revisions, but a few minor characteristics haven't changed. It's a linear switch, which means no tactile bump, and it remains a medium heavy to heavy switch. So what has changed? Uh, according to various Reddit posts and Google Foo, sometime in the early 90s, Cherry changed the tooling of the MX Black, which led to the newer switches being less smooth and or less acoustically pleasing than the old ones. Today, Cherry MX Blacks are commonly differentiated between Vintage or Vint Blacks and the Post Update or Retooled Blacks. Now regardless of how you feel about the whole Vint versus Retooled Blacks debate, there's no question that a lot of people feel very strongly about the fact that Vint Blacks are better. You can tell because on any given day, there will be posts on Mech Market looking for Vint Blacks and they generally go for roughly double the price of Retooled Blacks. Not only that, but if you're lucky enough to find some NOS or new old stock Vint Blacks, the pricing can get even crazier. Not pre-drama, $5 per switch, holy pandas crazy, but definitely close to $2 per switch. Cherry must have seen the opportunity for something to help bridge the gap between old and new and help newer members of this expanding but still niche hobby to get their hands on that legendary smoothness. Enter the Hyperglide. The Hyperglide is Cherry's newest iteration of this storied and historical switch, which they announced at CES 2020. Cherry increased the gliding surface of the stem, and they redesigned the housing to include eight guide rails, which results in a wobble-free operation, increased durability from 50 million to 100 million actuations. But are they smoother or as sonically pleasing as Vint Black? Let's find out. Now here's an A to B comparison between the two switches. H is for Hyperglide and V is for Vint. I wanted to compare, uh, at least to my own feel, 
uh, which one was smoother, as well as look at the north-south and east-west wobble. So when I compare the two of them, this, and remember, this is a new old stock Vint Black. Some people say that Vint Blacks get smoother because they're used and so they wear in a little bit. Uh, I personally don't really subscribe to that view just because uh, the Vint Blacks that I've used, they seem to fall on a range from gritty-ish to really smooth and really nice. And the new old stock Vints that I, I have, uh, they seem to be among the smoothest I've ever used. And so I don't know if it's because as switches age, uh, you know, dirt or dust can get inside the switch itself, make it a little uh, kind of gritty or, or, you know, not, I guess, crunchy, but not in a good way. Um, and to me, the newer the switch, the better that feels, the better it takes lube, the, you know, things like that. Now, remember, these are both unlubed, unfilmed switches. Um, but here is the Hyperglide North-South Wobble. And I'm pushing pretty hard on this thing right now. Here is the vent north-south wobble. And here's the east-west wobble. So they seem to be pretty even when it comes to wobble. In terms of smoothness, I would say the vent feels slightly lighter. I'm gonna have to grab a scale so I can uh, see how you know how much these uh, weigh. But to me, the vent feels a little lighter to my finger. The hyperglide feels a little heavier. And I'm not gonna talk about sound because we already did the sound comparisons. But yeah, the the vent definitely feels a tad bit lighter. All right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to test the actuation force rating of uh, these switches. So here we have the uh, Hyperglide Black. It's on a scale. I set it up. Um, it's plugged into my computer and essentially keyboard tester is going to make a noise when this thing actuates. So first I'll try it with just my finger. And it looked like it was right about 60 grams, which is which is exactly what we expected it to be um, based on the actuation force rating. Now let's do it slightly more scientifically. I have a stack of nickels. Each nickel is about 5 grams. So that's 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. 40, 45, 50, 55, and here we see it still hasn't actuated. Here's another, so each penny is about 2.5 grams. So right there, it's pretty much 60 grams on the money. Um, so yeah, that's the Hyperglide. And now let's test the Vint Black. Okay, so here's test two for the vents. Uh, when I push down with my finger, it seemed to be significantly heavier, but the, I mean, the scale doesn't lie, right? So that's 55, 57.5. Okay, so 60 now. Okay, but 62-ish, 62.6. So they're pretty much spot on. So this video is getting a little long, so I'm gonna actually break it up. I'm gonna be posting another quick video, uh, just a couple hours about uh, a, a, a to B comparison with a lot of different switches. But I wanted to end this one here and I wanted to give you my kind of closing thoughts or final remarks. Uh, do I recommend the Hyperglide? Absolutely. Uh, I think it's a great budget alternative to Vint Blacks. I think 
nine out of 10 times, you're not really going to be able to tell the difference. Uh, me personally, I think the vents do sound a little better, but I don't know if that's worth the added cost. Um, of course, these are not lubed or filmed. Both of them are going to sound better if they are lubed and or filmed. And maybe I'll do another quick video about that uh, in the future. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to end this one here, guys. Thanks so much for watching if you did. And, um, you know, I, I'm basically just starting out. So I'd really appreciate any feedback that you could give me in the comment section. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, this is Maker Mods. Thanks once again. I'll see you all in the next one.